It's that time of the year again, I get asked the same three questions over and over. What's new in F123? How's the gameplay? Is it fun as a sim racer? And lastly, would you recommend it? This video is to answer those questions and to let you guys know if you should hop on the hype train and get F123 at release. And with that, welcome back to Overtake.gg, my name is Champion Joe and I had the pleasure of testing the new EA Codemasters collaboration F123 a few days early so we can highlight all the changes of the annual Formula 1 game for you. First up, Story Mode Breaking Point makes its return on the series letting you jump into the cockpit of Aiden Jackson once more, an up and coming driver on the F1 roster. But just like last time around, Aiden is not the only playable character, with you also filling in the role of his rival and teammate Devin Butler, as well as future star F2 driver Kelly Mayer. The influence of Netflix Drive to Survive is omnipresent, with the use of stage interviews, where the protagonist narrates happenings from the past and over-the-top cutscenes that mix up the order and breaks the everyday routine of driving a GP. The story is overall fun, but never too creative. Some dialogues, especially in the calls, are cringe as heck. But hey, that's also something we know from the TV series, right? In my eyes, Breaking Point is the perfect starting point to get acquainted with F123. It will ease you into the ins and outs of the franchise, challenge you with diverse race objectives and entertain you with the clownery that is the new team on the block, Connor Sport, that you are driving for. And I thought I was driving for Ferrari for a second. Absolutely, only three wheels on the car at the moment, Crofty. Aiden Jackson looks on in despair. Here comes that spare wheel now. Negative for me were some of the scenarios, like one F2 race with season frontrunner Kelly, where the team decides to pit her from hards to softs on P1, while she apparently is putting out the fastest lap times. Afterwards, you end up in the midfield and get the objective to win the race, while no one else on the grid is making a change for tires. Not something you would really see in F1 or F2. And making up 8 or 9 places from the midfield to the front really made it difficult for me to keep playing on the hardest difficulty setting, which is a shame because the challenge was gone after reducing to medium difficulty. From there on out driving felt more of a chore to progress the story than the actual main event, which is not your desired state when you are playing a driving game. Also don't expect too much influence on the story by your actions, because if you fail to reach the imposed goal, you go game over and have to start the mission over again instead of actually manipulating the story in any way. Yes, you earn reputation and performance points by reaching those goals, answering staff requests or getting the fastest lap, but so far this influenced the overall storyline not by the slightest. But I haven't finished the story yet, so who knows. I for my part like the second outing of Breaking Point. It's entertaining, it's fun and as I said already, it's the easiest way in to F123. Next to the story mode, F1 World is the big new shiny thing. Some were speculating that this would be the Formula 1 equivalent of FIFA Ultimate Team, but that's only half true. You see, yes, there's points to make, a car to upgrade and also contracts to issue and extend with staff. But within F1 World you can also find a Gran Turismo like Cafe Tour which is called Series, where you can play some single player playlist events to earn car upgrades and progress in the season pass. And you can find the Grand Prix and time trial modes hidden in there which makes this more the hub for online and single player quick fun. Which brings me to the maybe most exciting new feature in F123, the online rating and safety rating features as well as the new ladder system. Just like I was preaching for years, F1 has a League of Legends like online league system now where you can grind for your next rank, starting in bronze, reaching all the way to elite. Sadly, there weren't enough players in the preview build to test this but I'm sure this will be the new heart of F1's online play. If the servers are stable, the safety rating works or how full the lobbies will be can only be said with time. So if this is the main feature you would want to buy the game for, maybe wait for more in-depth thoughts from us, we will for sure provide in the future. Other new features are Las Vegas and Los Ale, the two new racetracks that are in the game, 
red flags and the 35% race distance races. And of course, other than that, the biggest innovations in F123 are the overhauled physics that influence how you play with a steering wheel and with controller. First things first. Yeah, it's a big step in the right direction from last year. To summarize, I would say it's F122 with support wheels. Everything that made the last iteration so unbearable is toned down. So race starts are super easy now. Accelerating out of corners is a breeze and curbs are no longer designed to just rip you apart. Which leads to the dull force feedback this game produces being less of a pain than it was before. But still, if you are a sim racing veteran, F123 is not the game for you. There is just not enough information communicated to the driver that it feels like being in control of a real car. If I had to describe it, I would say F123 drives with a wheel like if you would be playing with a super precise gamepad. But with the lack of physics calculation underneath, cornering is just not as satisfying like in a sim racing title and at least for me, a real connection to the car just can't be established. But can it still be fun though? Absolutely. Due to the game not being so punishing anymore, flying through the Suzuka S's never felt better in an F1 game. On controller, that's a different story. With the new acclaimed precision drive tech, F123 feels super intuitive to pick up. The system helps out massively to stay in control and will for sure be liked by beginners and veterans alike. I for my part who never plays with a gamepad felt right at home from the get go and was able to drive an all right lap on Imola with my second try. No spinning, no issues with holding the racing line, it just clicked. To finalize my thoughts on gameplay, yeah F123 might not be the best gameplay you can have with an F1 car. But with all the simulation aspects this game offers in being true to the racing series itself, it's still a lot of fun. All cars, all tracks, really good AI races, all the official graphics and the official broadcast crew is not easy to beat. It's the complete F1 package, which might make you look past all the flaws the game has in its gameplay, if that only would be the only flaws. Sadly, my first hours with F123 were plagued with many small bugs and hiccups that just make the overall experience less exciting. First, my wheel wouldn't calibrate correctly, which led to me crashing into a wall for the first 20 minutes. And of course, there are crazy bugs all over the place, like always. Isn't that right, Kevin? De Vries! Magnussen! My favorite was Russell not having teeth. <sighs> Real nightmare fuel. Which brings us to the graphics that are all over the place as well. F123 is not only borrowing iRacing's super ugly yellow tint for this year, no, objects plop in all the time, which can be super annoying if that object is your reference marker for braking. And then my biggest issue, the game is just so out of focus so often. Things in the distance really are blurry, which makes F123 the worst looking game in the franchise in the recent years. For me it looks like they tried to go in a direction that suits photorealism, ending up with a product that is hard on the eyes and unpleasant to play. So not a fan there, but in the end I was playing an early version of the game with the day one patch being pushed out when this video goes live. So this might change. Only one question remains, would I recommend F123? And like always, this depends. If you're a hyper Formula 1 fan, then sure, pick it up. There is no better simulation of the actual F1 circus that can give you this feeling of competing in the series. If you like driving games like Forza Horizon 5 and now want to dip your toe into racing games a bit, then sure, grab it too. It's a good racing experience for all kind of players. No matter if you're picking up a gamepad for the first time or you want to challenge yourself and drive without any driving aids. Only if you are part of the sim racing elite and are looking for an elite driving experience is when I wouldn't recommend F123. Just like in the years before, the force feedback is just not sophisticated enough to satisfy that itch of wanting to drive a real Formula 1 car. Which doesn't mean that you can't have fun with it. Breaking point, career mode, co-op career. VR support, there are incentives to start playing for sim racers. Just don't expect an AMS2 or AC quality in the driving department. And overall I would say, give the game some time and let the hype around it subside before you make a decision. Let people play it for a week 
and then see what they will find. Then you will for sure know if it's worth your money or not. F123 is available on PlayStation, Xbox and PC in early access from the 13th and available to everyone three days later on the 16th. Will you pick it up? Let me know in the comments down below. And maybe subscribe to the channel because we will produce loads of helpful F1 content in the upcoming weeks. If you don't want to miss it, ring the bell to get notified whenever we upload something new. And also check out our review of TT Isle of Man, a biking game that drops you in an open world environment. But that's it from me today. Thank you so much for tuning in and see you next time around. Cheers!